Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is time for the Windows 10 from a gamer's perspective video thing. Why am I talking like this? Doesn't matter. First of all, before we go any further, this is Windows 10 technical preview. As you can see, evaluation copy build 9926. First thing we need to do is establish the demographic that we're talking about here. Windows must be the way I think it should be and anyone who disagrees is so fucking wrong that they should burn in the fires of Gabe Newell's boiler room. What that means is that gamers are very particular about the way they like their computer set up, their desktop set up. They like everything to be easy. There should be no uh, barrier between you and what you want to do. The game, recording the game, uploading the game to MLG. Let's address a few things just off, right off the bat. Uh, first of all, as you can see, we go straight into the desktop. Uh, not a problem there at all. No uh, Metro, no tablet UI at all. It's just desktop. If I move my mouse over to the right hand side of the screen, there's no charms bar. There's no tablet UI on the left hand side, the right hand side. There's nothing. It's just me, the desktop, taskbar, top marks straight away. Let's just make things a little bit more familiar and at home. First of all, anyone who's familiar with Windows 7 or any, any version of Windows really will recognize all this stuff. And I would like to have all my desktop icons, so I want computer and I want my users files and I want a nice quick shortcut to the control panel as well because that's how I like things. And this is the wrong way around because ever since Windows 95 the recycle bin should be at the bottom, my computer should be at the top. Much better. Let's just uh, put a nice appropriate wallpaper on there. So first thing people might take issue with is the taskbar. Of course we've got all our running programs down here. We've also got two new options. We've got a search option and we've also got a nice task view switcher which we'll look at later. First of all I want to make sure that people aren't having a massive wobble over this search box because one thing I do know is that any gamer or anyone I know who's a gamer will turn around to me and say why the fuck does two thirds of my taskbar have to be taken up by a search box? Well good news my friends it does not because if you right click anywhere in your taskbar go on search you can either turn it into a nice little icon which is the way I'll probably keep it or you can get rid of it completely. The good thing is is whenever you click the start button which we'll do later because nice things are behind that button the search box comes back so you can always use it just like you can on the Windows 7 start menu. Anyway, all piss taking aside, it should be clear to see that this is immediately familiar to anyone who uses Windows 7. And yes, you can do all the usual things you could do in Windows 7 as well. Obviously at the bottom, people don't like having the usually large taskbar, so we can use small taskbar buttons, and if we want, we can never combine them. So we've got all our full uh, taskbar window title bars. I mean, we're right back in Windows 95. I mean, this is dawn of time stuff, so. There's a few other benefits to the desktop as well, which people don't really know about, which were actually introduced in Windows 8, but you will now get to benefit from in Windows 10. A nice one is uh, item tech tick boxes, I should say. So, for example, I can tick multiple icons like this and then perform mass functions on them. Move, delete, whatever. That's probably not the best folder to show an example, but if I open up Explorer, go into my hard drive here, you'll see I can tick folders and then I can cut, copy, paste them. It's a nice little feature, I mean it's, it's, it's better than doing this or doing this. Uh, you don't have to hold control anymore to select multiple files if you are the type of person who does that. So that's one nice little touch and actually that was introduced in Windows 8 and I don't think people give Windows 8 enough credit for some of the things they did to improve the desktop. Albeit a lot of the things they did do to the desktop did ruin it, but uh, that's bad by. Let's not put it off any longer, we'll all come to see the main question of the day. Daniel, the start menu. What has happened to the start menu? Well, unless you've been living under a rock, you already know that we already have a nice start menu instead of a start screen. Oh, there it is. And yeah, this is kind of polarizing a few people at the moment, but I think the first thing to bear in mind is that this is not by any stretch of the imagination final and it's going to change and it's been improved and updated and all this kind of thing all the time. Now, first thing to note about it is that it is a start menu and not a start screen and as you can see at the bottom there there's my search the web and windows uh, which I hidden before from always being visible but if you think about this like the Windows 7 start menu you've got your search at the bottom which was always there and you've got your power on the right hand side which was always there but yeah it was at the bottom but okay and uh, you've got your username and your profile picture and you've got your most commonly pinned or used 
icons you've got your most uh, most used there you've got recently added ones there now a lot of people are going to throw the toys out of the pram I understand about the Metro interface because though it's a tablet UI it shouldn't be on a desktop etc 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 uh, I don't really buy it to be honest with you I mean they can be quite useful and they're not that bad on this particular version I mean it's not taking up that much real estate is it really and they can be quite useful I mean I like having the weather one there just to give me a quick overview and the news one I do like as well the one problem that I do have with it is the all apps menu which isn't the best it's only uh, on the left hand side here it doesn't take over the whole of the start menu which it probably should do so you can see more on the screen at the same time but uh, if we have a look through that it's kind of a little bit a little bit fiddly I mean what you can do is obviously you just press start and start typing and you get your get your searches so if I type in Skype it'll instantly find Skype for me because it's good like that but yeah there needs to be some work to the all apps menu I can see a lot of people having a wobble about that but I mean it's not the end of the world I mean I really your most common apps are going to either be here anyway or you're going to pin them there or you're going to pin them there or you're going to pin them here so that's not even the end of the world it should be noted as well that you don't have to have metro apps on this side either if you don't want any any metro type apps on your desktop then don't have them just unpin them all you just pin things like steam Another big improvement in Windows 10 is the task switching, which is really good. Uh, Alt tab is still there. It's just as nice as ever, but it gives you nice previews of uh, programs that are currently running at the moment. Not too dissimilar to Windows 7 and 8 there, to be honest with you. Much better than Windows 8, I should say, because Windows 8 had this dodgy sidebar tackle. Uh, if I recall, I don't think Alt tab was really in that. But anyway, very similar to Windows 7. So that's all good. But we've also got this new little button down here on the left hand side of the taskbar. It's called Task View. And what this does is it unlocks a feature of Windows 10, which has been in Windows NT since the dawn of time, but never exposed in the interface unless you've got third-party apps, and that is multiple desktops. Why do I need multiple desktops, you may ask? Well, one of the main things you can do with them is I can have Steam open on this desktop, and on this desktop I might want to run, say, my photographs for whatever reason, and then on this desktop... I may want to, for example, have, for no apparent reason, uh, what can we run? Uh, might want to have the Xbox app open on this window. So that means I can have, this is very basic. So I could have like different setups though. So like this could be my game desktop, all my game Steam's open here, all my games are there on this one. Uh, this one could be like my video editing desktop. This is where I do all my video editing. So basically it just means that you can organize yourself a little better. Different different desktops for different types of tasks basically. So that's a very cool thing. Now for the people who are concerned about the apps in Windows 8. And oh no they shouldn't have tablet apps on a desktop PC. So on and so on and so on. I just want to play a little game with you. It's called Spot the Win32 app. We've got paint. We've got the store. We've got Xbox. Xbox is looking quite tablety, but not too tablety because it's not like really massive big in your face. The store app doesn't look very tablety at all, really. This looks very nice. In fact, I would say this is not even slightly tablety. I would say that was, would be awkward to use on a tablet. Very nice use of real estate again. Again, this is a beta, it's not final. And this is Paint, which is the Win32 app. If you guess Paint, then well done, you're not a fucking moron. I don't see a world of difference between the style of this and the style of this. Uh, people, uh, I did hear a comment about, uh, well, why are they not using the ribbon UI? Why do they have to use this new type of UI? And yeah, I can understand that to some degree, but anything that's natively for the desktop, i.e. Win32 apps, like Paint here, still use the ribbon UI. Explorer still uses the ribbon UI. Office will still use the Ribbon UI. Anything that it made sense to use it will still use it. Store apps, which can be used on a tablet, uh, where the Ribbon UI doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, uh, don't use the Ribbon UI like the store here, but they don't need it and it's and they've got they've gone to a lot of effort to make this look and feel more like a desktop app on a desktop and a tablet. Uh, app on on a tablet I mean a good example let's have another look at the Xbox app here uh, you've got this burger menu on the left hand side at the top which gives you all the commands that we used to be on the charms bar so it's nice to have those there a little bit Windows 3.1 ish if you ask me that 
Uh, also, like I say, everything's now scaled and compressed properly so that it looks like it should do on a desktop. This doesn't look like I'm necessarily in a tablet experience. I can full screen it like this. Uh, now it's like Windows 8 again, and if I was on a tablet, this is how I'd want it to be. So every, there's nothing distracting me, everything's easy to touch and easy to scroll around and so on and so forth. And if I move my mouse back up to the top there, just like you can in Windows 8, uh, you can just get that back into a smaller window again. But as I was saying earlier, you don't have to use the Metro apps. You don't have to ever have them in your life. Just unpin them, get rid of them all. And then all of a sudden, you are living a nice, healthy, metro-free existence, just like you were right the way back when Windows 95 was first released. And Jennifer Aniston and Matt Perry decided to do that really awful video, which nobody should ever have to see. Ah, uh, Microsoft's fifth floor. Ladies' modems, children's shareware, and our bridal peripheral salon. Wow. Taskbars and email and shortcuts, oh my. Taskbars and email and So now I've got my start menu set up like the typical gamer. All I need to get by in life is GeForce experience because woohoo. And Steam because that's where all my games are. Paint so I can draw funny images. I need notepad so I can write down my cheats. Remote desktop because I don't even know and PowerShell because anyone who's serious about Windows needs PowerShell. Uh, so as you can see my new start menu is completely devoid of any kind of metro activity whatsoever apart from the settings app here which is a curious thing people mentioned. How dare they have a settings app which is modern UI but again unless you knew about these things I don't really see how you would know. How is this any different from this? I mean we have search there, search there, we have the menu here, we have the menu here on the left, we have the options there, we have the icons there, they're both in Windows which both look exactly the same. Really don't understand what people are striking about to be honest with you. That is a window where your settings are and that is what the control panel has been since the dawn of time. Windows ME did a worse job than this, so seriously, stop crying, it's a settings menu, get over it. So you may be sitting there thinking, well that's all very nice and well, uh, you've just spent the last 15 minutes explaining to me why Windows 10 is exactly the same as Windows 7 and that's why I should up it right up the backside. Well, there is a very good reason why you should choose Windows 10 over Windows 7, in my opinion, and that is the incredibly, incredibly good in performance improvements over Windows 7, which Windows 8 and 8.1 had as well. But, of course, Windows 8 and 8.1 are out of the picture for most of the people watching this video because fucking Metro. But Windows 10 is great because all of a sudden I can now enjoy the performance improvements of Windows 8 and have the interface of Windows 7. I can have my start menu. I can have my apps in Windows. I can... that's why it's got Windows, by the way. And I can run games at much better performances. Generally speaking, you will find up to 20% better performance from games in Windows 10 over Windows 7. First of all, the specifications of my machine, for those that don't know, I'm running an Intel Core i5-4570 processor with a GeForce 660 graphics card and a 128GB SanDisk SSD with 8GB of memory. After doing some albeit unscientific testing with my phone's stopwatch, Windows 10 boots on this machine in around 15 seconds, whereas the boot time was more like 27 seconds for Windows 7. It was a similar story when waking up from sleep. The machine handled it in around 4 seconds in Windows 10 as opposed to around 9 seconds on Windows 7. In terms of 3D graphics performance, I used 3D Mark 11 to do some benchmarking on both operating systems. I won't be going into DirectX 12 just yet as that isn't ready in my opinion, but we do see performance boosts in DirectX 11. Uh, Windows 7 scores 6502 in this test, whereas Windows 10 scores 6958. This is with both operating systems running clean installs and running the latest drivers. But what does this show in terms of FPS in different games? Well, in Sonic Generations, we were hitting a cap of 60 FPS, which is the monitor's frame rate, without any kind of slowdown at all in Windows 10. Windows 7 also hit 60 FPS, but it was noticeably slower at times when there were a lot of enemies on the scene screen at once. Uh, the FPS was hovering around the 50 to 55 mark oftentimes, and sometimes dropping as low as 48. In Watch Dogs, the FPS on Windows 7 was around the 27 to 30 mark and never really going above 30 FPS. In contrast, Windows 10, the FPS never dipped below 30 and was generally hovering around the 30 to 34 FPS mark. 
With F1 2013, it was a lot harder to draw any firm conclusions. The FPS topped out at 60 FPS, and the maximum my monitor will display on both Windows 7 and Windows 10, so there was no real noticeable, noticeable difference on this particular game in the real world. In GTA 4, the FPS hovered between 48 and 50 FPS in Windows 7, while somewhat inexplicably, the FPS count was a constant and never wavering 53 FPS in Windows 10. So in conclusion, it's Windows 10. It's better than Windows 8, it's about as good as Windows 7 except it's a lot faster and will play your games at a much higher frame rate. Uh, it doesn't make coffee yet or sing the national anthem. Uh, it does have this Cortana thing in it, but that's not available in my region apparently. But we, we've done a video on it before, so if you want to see more of that, you can, you can just click here. Can't you Cortana? Are you now? Yes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Torah.